Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Today we have um, Professor Ram Upadhyay with us. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your time, Professor. Thank you for coming in. Um, I'll welcome to Richa Dialogues. I'll start by giving the audience a quick introduction about you, and then we can get into like some of the topics that I have for you to discuss. So Professor uh, Ram Upadhyay is he's currently based in Sweden. Uh, he is the current health advisor to the South African country of Lesotho. He's also a medicinal scientist, uh, infectious disease and oncology, visiting professor Kwangun University in South Korea. He is co-founder and CEO of Fenet Life Sciences in, based in Singapore. He's also the head medical scientist, ZC Medical AB, based in Sweden. And currently in India, he's also doing a lot of work uh, with COVID and he's the principal health and education advisor um, in Uttar Pradesh Development Forum. He also works very closely with the Smart Cow Foundation and he's also principal health advisor with them. So firstly, thank you so much, Professor. I know you're very busy. So uh, thank you for taking out a few minutes and coming here. I know you have been working a lot on COVID and you've been traveling all around the world. Um, studying what the virus is initially when it came and also like the current situation very closely. So it will be very interesting to hear your opinions about, um, about this. I'll, next, I'll give you a quick uh, one or two minutes introduction about the dialogue and what I'm trying to do with this platform. So Richard Dialogue is basically, I created this platform thinking uh, here I can bring people from different backgrounds who have had different stories and learnings in their life and if they can come here and share their learnings and journey, journeys, and the learnings which are coming out from these discussions, if that can help the audience in their professional and uh, personal capacity. The basic goal is to you know, help them make, help our lives make more meaningful and more happier a lot of times. Myself, I've been stuck in situations where I thought, I don't know what the next step is. There's so much uncertainty. So I thought the best way is if we can talk to people who are more experienced and they sharing their learnings can help a lot of us. So, Absolutely. so Professor, again, welcome. I have, we can touch upon some of the questions. So firstly, um, can we, I know there's, it's been a while now, it's been more than two years since the pandemic started, but just to hear your professional point of view on the COVID virus, what, what exactly is COVID virus? If you can, if you can say like in brief words and, how does it affect the human body? Yeah, so first of all, Mudit, thank you very much uh, for giving me a very nice introduction. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I really appreciate the efforts that you are putting in, putting all those stories together that definitely will help many people in the similar situation or maybe a likewise situation. So it's a great initiative. So thanks to you and thank to you. your mm -hmm. Richa Foundation. Thank you. Sir. Coming back to your question. So as you rightly mentioned that it is a while that we are dealing with this uh, COVID virus. Mm -hmm. So COVID virus is, a, is from the family of the coronavirus that we know. Okay. And uh, this coronavirus like uh, also associated to the family of the influenza virus as well. There is uh, some lineage some connections to it. But talking particularly about this uh, COVID-19 outbreak that happened in Wuhan, mm -hmm. it was considered that uh, coronavirus is a, uh, generally is living in most of the bats mm -hmm. and uh, it is originated from the bat. So it was never meant to come to the human and infect them. Uh, but somehow it has got under some mutations and because of those mutations, there is a species jump from animal to human. Mm -hmm. So that's how he learned it. It learns that art actually that how to infect the human. And that's how we got into this entire mess uh, from, I think, September or September 2019 onwards, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's about the COVID-19. and. Uh, then talking about the, the second part of your question that how it affect the human body per se. So as we know that since it is a virus, uh, it is uh, once it is going to enter into the body, mm. uh, it is going to do the two or three things, uh, mainly uh, that it is going to uh, 
deal bed, it is going to be dealt by the immune system. In that process, it will try to take over the immune system. So that's where many times what happens that uh, the disease is started with the fever, congestion, and then later on it go into the cytokine storm, which we know as a inflammation process also in the body. And later on, it generally go into the dysregulation of various blood parameters, which been which we know as a like a thromboinflammation. Mm -hmm. That's where it uh, it generally like a dysregulate the platelets and dysregulates many other like a clotting factors into the body mm -hmm. and slowly if it is not going to be addressed then it can damage various vital organs into the body such as your heart uh, kidney lungs gi tract liver anything and if still it is not getting addressed uh, timely, then the patient generally go to the multiple organ failure as well. So, so that's how um, we faced actually, especially into the into the um, um, web two, which was caused by the Delta virus. So, people have seen that how it can cause the damage to the human life, mm -hmm. and uh, so. So yeah. I think now we learn, we have learned all those things and we are better prepared to deal with it. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And now since you also just mentioned that we are looking for better treatments and it's been some time for some of the research which has been conducted, it's been about more than two years. And now vaccinations are in full progress, like full in full force also like all around the world. So can we touch upon what happens in our body like when we get vaccinated, like again, like we're trying to save ourselves from this virus, from this virus, and how does that help us from further exposure to COVID? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a very brilliant question, Mudit. So I think that uh, what happens that uh, when virus enters in your body, generally like a, as I mentioned, that it is going to be dealt by the, uh, by the, our immune system. Mm -hmm. So in order to like a deal with that situation, mm. uh, what vaccines does that before the natural infection occur to anybody, mm. uh, how we can train the immune system. Mm. So that's where the vaccine plays very important role. Mm. Okay, vaccine is not considered as a treatment, but vaccines are meant for the protection from the disease. So when it comes to the protection, it means that a, a part uh, or maybe the inactivated or maybe a weakened form of the same virus or maybe just a, a particular part of that virus or maybe just like a, a uh, live attenuated virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, in any form the vaccine can be made. Okay, and that can be injected into the body where it will mimic the disease, but it will not like make you sick, mm. okay? So what will happen that our immune system will get alert and when the immune system is alerted, it is going to read it as a like a, a real disease, okay? For immune system, it is a real disease. Yeah. So what our immune system will do that it will become active and mm. try to control the situation and try to destroy actually that particular virus by engulfing it mm -hmm. and when it will engulf it okay yep. it will it will like a digest it and it will process it then what will happen that at the same time it is destroying it but at the same time it will it will keep those molecular signature recorded into the database okay mm -hmm. so once those molecular signature has been recorded in the database of our immune system. Mm -hmm. So when in the near future, when you will like have a, a natural or a like a real exposure to that uh, pathogen, yeah. okay, or that infection, mm -hmm. then what will happen that our body will not lose any time because mm -hmm. it is already in the record and yeah. automatically it will start producing the antibodies and try to kill that virus and take the control of the situation and make the person disease free. So yeah. that is the concept actually by which 
the vaccine works and by which, um, and, and this is the mechanism how it protects. So vaccine is just to train you for the real situation. Thank you for sharing. And there's been a lot of debate about like role of vaccination and people who are healthy, younger, and then people who might be older and might have some pre existing conditions and not just older people, just all around people who might have some medical conditions. So the role of vaccine, do you think, is it the same for people who are healthy and who don't have any conditions and maybe like their immune system might be better off fighting the virus itself or and with people who have some condition. So is there a difference because there's a lot of talk and since this is very new also, it's just been two years. What's your view on this? Yeah, similarly. Uh, so regarding this, as we know that uh, this is the first time that vaccine has been discovered and manufactured, okay, during the pandemic, okay. Yeah. So there may be uh, some relaxation in their approval, okay. Mm -hmm. We don't have the long-term study, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so in uh, so when there is in but but at the same time the agencies decided across the globe mm -hmm. that. Uh, still it is beneficial uh, to give the vaccine and protect the human and the humanity okay so that's how i think we made some like a not so well informed decision but definitely those decisions need to be made mm -hmm. otherwise we may have lost many people in that process yeah so so that time whatever the decision has been made whatever the studies uh, have been done Okay, and uh, do you, and, and because of those limited information or limited uh, uh, studies, we have definitely made some decisions and it helped. Okay, mm -hmm. but when we know that uh, now that uh, pandemic is uh, is still there, but at least the Omicron is taking that pandemic to the endemic stage. Looks like from the data from the last one or two month for sure. Mm -hmm. So if the situation will remain same, but at the same time, we also need to understand that the Omicron is not just going to sit quietly somewhere, okay? The Omicron may also go into the another series of evolution, okay? Mm -hmm. And because of that evolution, maybe the new mutant may take place mm -hmm. and there will be the new variant of concern in the near future. Mm -hmm. So we need to prepare for that. But yeah. at the same time, it is giving us a enough time to study enough, mm. okay? Rather than making a desperate decisions, we should be able to make the well-informed decisions. Mm. So how we are going to do that? Yeah. So the coming back to the, your question mm. that, okay, that, uh, uh, that, okay, how we can classify the patients, mm. okay, depending upon their uh, they, they, their health condition, okay? So when it comes to that, so as we were always talking about it, the people who are like a 60 and above, okay? Mm -hmm. Those people need to be considered little vulnerable because by that age, in mm -hmm. many people, the immune system is not functioning mm -hmm. at their peak, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they may have or 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 if like if they are like a challenged by some another, another disease yeah. like a, some immunosuppressive drug uh, some immunosuppressive uh, disease yeah. maybe some metabolic disorder like a diabetes cardiovascular uh, diseases or maybe somebody is like a, having some kind of a cancer dealing with the cancer mm -hmm. or any kind of a like a liver disease like a hepatitis or somebody may be having HIV or something like that. Mm -hmm. So all those disease like a pause more challenges for those kind of a people. So we can like a call them like a vulnerable people, mm -hmm. okay, who are living with some kind of a comorbid uh, conditions, mm -hmm. okay, and those people need to be protected first. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason uh, that we always like a mention that okay, first let let us give them the vaccine. And later on, we have provided them the booster doses as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the later on, the, the the another segment which you call like a maybe adult, mm -hmm. which I am like a referring over here, like a maybe less than 60, 
mm. between like a 20 to 60 kind of a range. Mm. If those people are not a patient of anything, they are like a living uh, normal life without having any disease. Mm. For those people, I think uh, having the two doses may be enough. Those people may, may not require the boosters. Mm. Okay. And similarly, it goes to the goes to our youth. So mm. when we call youth, like, okay, the people who are like less than 18 and so on, and then further, you can classify them as your kids and children. Yeah. So that is the segment that we need to deal with some kind of a delicacy. Yeah. Because when we are talking about the children, as we always say that the, the children are the future, okay, of any country, okay. So at the same time, uh, when we are talking about the vaccine, which is not studied so well, or may have, or you can say that we have a like a limited study upon them, mm -hmm. since uh, and we do not know what will be the long term effect of them, and we know that how the children and kids really dealt or mm -hmm. or, or survived actually this particular uh, pandemic situation, mm -hmm. where we know that they did not suffer much, and there is a science behind it. Yeah. how it happened how they dealt with it yeah. okay how they have tackled the disease and how their immunity has neutralizes those kind of a threats mm -hmm. uh, so so somehow that okay we should not be into a rush yeah. where we will start like a vaccinating them or mm -hmm. putting them on the booster doses yeah. uh, because ultimately what happens because this is the age which is a Mm, uh, kind of a, like an adolescent where a lot of hormonal changes are going on, mm. various kind of a growths are happening within the body. Mm. Okay, so and we really do not know that how this thing, especially the boosters are going to affect that ent entire endocrinology mm. of those kids or those children. Yeah. So and it is not like a something which is really needed. Yeah. Okay, if it is a political decision, it's a different thing. But is it is it a medical choice or it is a medical decision or is there a science to yeah. support it? So yeah. those decisions need to be made based on some rational. Mm. If that rational is not in place, then it will be very difficult to deal with those kind of a things in future. Yeah. So definitely, as you mentioned, that there is definitely some talk. There may be definitely some kind of a speculations mm. that what is the right way to vaccinate or to provide the boosters. Yeah. But definitely those decisions need to be made yeah. in order um, uh, and guided by the science, not by the political science. Yeah, no, very nicely explained and thank you. And in terms of periodic um, booster shots, which we are seeing right now that, as you also mentioned, that the virus is also mutating and also might mutate. There's a good potential or possibility that it again mutates in the future. And then people are trying to get new vaccines for each mutant. Now, for in, in the human body, there's a T cell, and then periodic vaccination might actually affect, might actually like the effect of it would might be like against or what it's actually intended to be. So, can we just in one or two minutes touch upon the T cell, the function, and then how can periodic vaccination, if done very quickly, can affect us? Yeah. No, this is another brilliant question from you, and I see that you are a very well-read person uh, because you really hit the right question. And uh, uh, I can uh, say that, uh, as you know, that uh, when we are talking about the periodic vaccine, okay, uh, generally, uh, generally we think that, okay, once the vaccination is done, it will have the memory B cells in our body Mm -hmm. So in the future, if you will, you will encounter the similar or same pathogen, okay, mm -hmm. your body will be ready, okay? Mm -hmm. So I will take like a couple of minutes over here just to explain yeah. that uh, the kind of a vaccines we have as of now, those vaccines are antibody-based vaccines, mm -hmm. okay? And antibody uh, generally remains for some period of time. So generally it is like a considered to maybe four to six months and then their concentration will comes down mm -hmm. and then again, the same person will, will, will become prone yeah. to catch that infection. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason that, okay, that some policies has described that uh, there will be a need uh, for a 
every six month there has to be a booster dose for that. Mm. But as a scientist, I can say that this is not the viable solution. Because first of all, uh, looking at the economic disparity, disparity among the globe, okay, you cannot like a start vaccinating the whole planet every six months. Mm. This is not viable. Okay. Mm. And at the same time, when we, we, we come from the scientific side, mm. the science also doesn't support that idea. Mm. Why it doesn't support? Because it can have some kind of a long-term consequences. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So what generally happens that when you keep uh, like a, when there is a repeated booster dose, it means what we are doing that we are like a giving that particular antigen again and again. Okay. So when we are giving that antigen again and again to the body, mm. so in the body, body is definitely going to, the immune system is definitely going to react to it. Yep. Okay. So mm -hmm. what will happen that your T cells, as you mentioned, okay, T cells are, we call them as a, like you can call them T cell. These are the immunity cells. We call them uh, cytotoxic T cells also. We call them as a killer cells also. Mm -hmm. So these are the cells uh, which is the part of, part of the uh, adaptive immunity. Mm -hmm. So exactly what happens that uh, when a antigen enter in our body, mm -hmm. okay, our innate arm. So there are the two parts of our immunity. One we call as an innate arm. One mm -hmm. is the adaptive arm. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So innate immunity, what it does, innate immunity is a, like a kind of a different cells. Mm. which we call them as a macrophages, we can call them dendritic cells, mm. and we can uh, call them many other types of cells also. Yeah. But these are the main cells. Mm. So what they does, they generally catch hold of that antigen, okay, mm. digest it, mm. okay, and after the digestion of that particular, then it take a particular fragment as a molecular signature, mm. and they point out on the top like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is going to be read, mm -hmm. okay, by the rest of the machinery. Okay, so then your adaptive immunity arm will get activated. Okay. So this is going to hand over from here to yeah. the adaptive immunity. Okay, so adaptive immunity, when we call, then there is a role of the T cell. Okay, okay. so T cell can be two types here one is the TH1, one is the TH2 depending upon a particular molecular signature, mm. a particular naive T cell mm. can become Th1 cell or a Th2 cell. Okay. So if mm. it become Th2 cell, it will become the cytotoxic T cell, which we call as a CD8 plus cells as well. Okay. okay. But now what is happening in this process, if we try to understand mm. that the antigen is continuously coming, yeah. Okay. And this cycle is repeatedly going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what this particular T cell will think, because that, okay, it is continuously, the environment is there because antigen is keep coming all the time. Yeah. So this cell may feel exhausted. Okay. So once the T cell get exhausted, mm -hmm. it means what will happen that it can trigger, it can, it can trigger a, another molecular signature, which we call as a PD-1. PD-1 is a program cell death. Mm -hmm. So it may commit suicide, or if it won't commit suicide, it will remain with those various molecular markers, which you call as a PD-1, which you can, can call as a like a CTLA-4. So those kind of a things, which is just trying to say stop, okay? It is same, if I give you an analogy, like you are going gym, okay? Mm -hmm. And you are working out with your trainer, mm -hmm. okay? And you are, today is your like a leg day, okay? Mm -hmm. You are just focusing on your leg muscle. Yeah. What is happening? Your trainer is saying one more, one more, one more, okay? Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. it is a continuous stimulation. Under that stimulation, mm -hmm. okay, you may do maybe like a one, two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, mm -hmm. but there is a continuous stimulation, one more, one more. What mm. you will do? You will raise a third arm, okay? And say, stop, I am done, okay? Mm. Just kill me, yeah. okay? Mm. 
all those kind of a responses will come out from those particular T cells when it get exhausted. Okay. Mm. So once it get exhausted mm. and then the problem doesn't end over here, mm. generally then what happens that some part of those uh, T helper cells, okay, mm. be will become like a plasma. Generally, the, ac the, the active plasma cells are our B cells also, okay? Mm. So partly or few or some of them mm. will become our memory cells as well. Mm. So when it become memory B cells, mm. then generally it is in our memory, but it is still having those signatures on. What mm. were those signatures? Stop. I am done. I can't do one more, okay? Mm. So mm. then they are just kind of a, like a sleeping. Mm. When I say using a sleeping, it means those cells are just in a low activity mode, mm. but what end having those molecular signatures on, mm. but when there is a new antigen will come or maybe a, a real infection will come, mm. those cells, once they will wake up, like they will try to go into the higher phase of the activity. Mm. Okay, but they are exhausted. So uh, their immune response may not be that great, mm, okay? And yeah. they, it may not be sufficient in order to take care of that particular disease. Mm. So that's where I can say that mm. giving uh, these kind of a boosters, okay, yeah. may not be a good idea mm. because it can lead to that kind of a problem, which that problem we generally see in various chronic inflammation diseases. Chronic inflammation diseases such as like HIV, hepatitis, or maybe cancer. Mm -hmm. So it is a non-phenomena. Mm -hmm. This can, uh, so, so giving the multiple boosters or periodic doses, mm -hmm. it may lead to that. Yeah. So I think that, uh, uh, that we should not go for such kind of antibody vaccines yeah. rather than we should like spend lots of some time and some money, some resources mm -hmm. to come up with the memory based uh, memory b cell based vaccines yeah. okay so once it is given mm. then at least it is taken care for the life and that's what we expect from the from the vaccines mm. so during a pandemic it was okay but now i think we should open our eyes and look into it more carefully so very nicely explained and thank you for giving examples and analogy i think that definitely helps with the technical terms you used and completely i agree with you it definitely makes sense but coming on to so the point that you mentioned is very nice like about periodic um, injecting um, antigen into the body if so if a common man decides to not take the vaccine but there's still threat uh, of the virus mutation outside and People, of course, are scared with a lot of people listen to media, different information sources. No one really knows what is true, what is not true. But there's one thing we can do by ourselves is like keep our lifestyle health in check. So this takes me to another question, which is if we take the minimum required dosages and then if we choose to, you know, like let this let there be more study about these boosters. But then in the meantime, we are working on our health. So what what are some preventive strategies naturally a common person can do in terms of like exercise, nutrition, or sleep? Like how are these important or do you think these are important in protecting our body and keeping it healthy? Yeah, uh, so very important question. I think now we are talking uh, towards the solution, how to, how to boost our immunity, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without taking the boosters, mm -hmm. okay? What could be the natural boosters to boost the immunity? Yeah. Okay. Rather than taking, rather than going by the chemical way. Okay. Mm. Uh, so that's a very important thing. So first, what I can say that uh, positivity always fuels the immunity. Okay. So people need to have a very positive mindset, no right. matter in what struggle they are going through. Mm. They will definitely pass through the struggle. The positivity always helps not with their current uh, uh, situation or challenges that they are facing, but at the same time, it helps to build your immunity and improve your immunity. Mm -hmm. That is number one. So always try to have positive thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, stay positive. Don't lose hope. Mm -hmm. That is something that play a very important role. Another thing is this, when it comes to 
some other things, as you rightly mentioned, a like a reasonable exercise, maybe like a three times in a week, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. You don't really need to hit the gym, but at least do some kind of a like a uh, cardio exercise. It can be a brisk walking. It can be just jogging. Or if somebody is like a uh, running from a long time, they can keep running. Okay. But other people can at least can get it started uh, yeah. with the uh, walking and slowly going to the jogging. Okay. And one important factor over here is, uh, so exercise is one, sleep is another one, because if you take like a sleep of like a minimum six to seven hours, mm -hmm. generally uh, you, you give a lot of time to your immunity, mm -hmm. okay, to, to, uh, to like improve their functions, mm -hmm. okay. So that is very important. Mm -hmm. And another part of this that always like a make a rule that at least uh, every day you are spending almost like a 30 to 40 minute under the sun. So you will get enough mm -hmm. sunlight. This is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening especially nowadays that people are like uh, hooked up to their mobile or their screen, their screen time is more. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they are even going out, they are using the sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they may not be like uh, getting the enough sun. Mm -hmm. So that is the region you will find in most of the people they are, they are having a vitamin D deficiency. Mm -hmm. And vitamin D is very important when it comes to the immunity or uh, it helps with many other metabolic disorder diseases also. Mm. So vitamin D plays very, very important role. Mm. So no matter what, people should decide to, for, to improve their life mm. and make sure that they will be spending at least 30 to 40 minutes in sun, somehow take any activity, mm. uh, sitting in your balcony, reading something, doing something. Mm. Uh, that's where I think that they need to do. Another part is the nutrition, as you mentioned. Yeah. So when it comes to the nutrition, the thing is this, that uh, uh, I'm not like a big fan of the packed and processed food. Yeah. Okay, the packed and processed food, uh, are generally it is going to mess up uh, yeah. in, a, uh, in, a, in a longer run. Yeah. So, so generally people, whenever there is a possibility, they should avoid it. Okay, and try to go like a, for a for a food with the life rather than having those like a uh, pegged food that may not be the mm. uh, good idea or a processed food. So any food that is coming out from the factory mm. that should be avoided. That's my recommendation. Mm. Uh, they should go a bit more like a natural in a way. Uh, they can have like a they can in, they can start their day. Mm. Uh, rather than starting with the coffee or a tea, they should start their day with at least with a one fruit or two fruits. Mm. Okay. And after that, once their intestine layer or that uh, the, the GI tract layer is covered by the fruit, mm. you can say, then if you want to pour a one cup of a tea or a coffee, that should be okay. But mm. don't start your day with a tea or coffee mm. uh, because then it is going to... Um, uh, uh, give you other uh, like a gastrointestinal problem in a long run. Exactly. So that is one. So they need to start their day with the, with the fruits mm. and they can keep eating the fruit until maybe uh, until noon. Mm. And after that, if they are going for a lunch, they should have a, uh, before like a thinking about the lunch, they should think about a good portion of salad. Okay, in that salad, they can have many things. They can have cucumber, beetroots, okay, mm. onion, uh, sweet peas, okay, rocola, mm. spinach, okay, and uh, broccoli mm. uh, and uh, Brussels. Whatever they can find, they can like uh, choose whatever is, mm. is available to them. Yeah. Okay, and then they can think about the real food, uh, whatever they want to eat. So if they will make those kind of a changes in their life, yeah. I think it is definitely going to help in the in a holistic way. Yeah. And at the same time, it is going to improve uh, their immunity as well. Thank you for sharing. I think these are very important points, and especially the one that you mentioned about the sunlight. Oftentimes we just, even personally, 
I do forget sometimes just going out in the morning and working from home. A lot of people are working from home. Slowly they are getting back to offices. And when you're working from home, that it even becomes more difficult to be going out, getting that sunlight. But it's it's in, it's very important if people can step out a few minutes in the morning, get the sun, and then they can start working. So I think those that's a very important point that you raised. One last question. Um, now you have done a lot of work in India. You've traveled there. You've also worked with a lot of uh, researchers in India. So since pandemic started and also currently, now we know the challenges with a country like India is mainly big population. There's a lot of people there. So how do you think uh, the vaccination or how has India dealt with the pandemic and how is the current vaccination helping or not helping? Like what is the current scenario according to you? So see, if we will, uh, because I can say about the India and so about the rest of the world as well, uh, what exactly after the second wave, okay? So until second wave, people were not sure, they were not making the right decisions because they didn't know how to respond to that particular situation. So many unfortunate incident has happened, okay? and many people suffered into that process. But after that, the way most of the countries, including India, the way they have taken care of the situation is really well, especially the way they have, uh, they have provided that vaccine, okay, the manufacturing of the vaccines. Okay, and as you know that during the pending pandemic, India was able to come up with their own two vaccines, which was not so easy, mm-hmm. okay, Covaxin and the another one was the Kobe Shield. Mm-hmm. So these were the like a two vaccines which was produced in no time. Mm-hmm. And otherwise it would have been very difficult for a country with a like a 1.4 billion mm-hmm. uh, people. Okay, mm-hmm. who is going to support you into that crisis because they need to support their population first, their citizen first. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think that the Indian government and especially the scientific community and the uh, the entrepreneurs from the biotech industry they all came together and they made sure that india will come up with their own vaccine mm. otherwise it would have been very difficult so i can say that on the policy matters as well as the way the decisions has been made and the way the 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 the, the, the various companies has been motivated mm. okay uh, they come up with those uh, vaccines right in time and that's how we were able to give the first dose and later on the second dose as well. And uh, so I think uh, the India fought really well. Mm -hmm. The national vaccination program uh, made like a uh, various uh, good suggestions, okay, during that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, The ICMR played very important role. So all those agencies working together, showing that coordination, integration of the activities, Okay, it always benefits uh, the, the, the public by and large. Yeah. And later on, the clinicians also played a very important role because the way they have understood the disease, they exactly know that how it is going to behave. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so they have really improved their the treatment, their protocols, yeah. and that's how they help the patients uh, like anything, saved many lives. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the last thing that I can say that uh, the, the since we have talked about this booster thing, uh, in that also the India did very really well because the India did not uh, started the booster dosing just like a boost, uh, give the booster dose to everyone. They calling it as a like a protection dose or they are calling it as a precautionary dose, mm-hmm. which, is, uh, which is always meant for the vulnerable people, mm-hmm. not for everybody. So yeah. I think it is a, like a very good decisions that has been taken by the, by the medical authorities and the health authorities, health officials in India. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the way I think that uh, people should, should, should lead it. And India has shown the way to the world that, okay, how you can take care of your people, mm-hmm. your nation, and how you can be uh, what they call like a um, Atmanirbhar. So how you can become the Atmanirbhar in the true sense Mm. So I think that that's what the leadership of the India has been shown. Mm. So I'm like a very happy uh, to say this and I'm glad that I hail from that country. Mm. 
Mm. So, so I'm happy all about uh, the India, the way they have dealt this particular pandemic. Definitely. Thank you so much, Professor. And thank you for answering all of these topics very like in an informed way. I'm sure this will help people who will be listening to this. And again, thank you so much for taking out time coming and I really appreciate it. And yeah, to have Laser you. Pleasure is mine. Thank you, Mudit. Uh, thank thanks you. a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.